You release the fourth John, rain, rejection, and rebound. Now, the president Ghana never got. And we're told that is a book on uh, President Nana Dankwa Ekufado. So let's start off. What's this thing about, why did you uh, publish the fourth John, rain, rejection, and rebound? And now it looks like we're having a consistent pattern with this one too. What is it about presidents and you wanting to write about their tenure? Well, when I started GIJ, I started reading about uh, journalists in the U.S. especially. I would go to the Pulitzer Prize website, download the award-winning stories, mm. print them, bind them, and read. And so I got to know about the practice elsewhere. <clears throat> and as I started practicing journalism, I realized that journalists there don't only report the news, but they document the issues they write about. So someone can do a big exposé and then after that write a book about it. But they also write about the governments or the administration they report on. So I remember when um, <clears throat> Trump was in office, so yes, his first year, there were about 18 books published about him mm. in his first year or so. But in Ghana, we allow our president to come, they go, they don't even write books. I met with former President Rawlings in 2016, and he told me, I asked him whether he was writing the book. He said, well, he was on it. And I don't know where it is, but they come and go. They don't write their memoirs. And those of us who cover them don't also document the issues. So in 50 years from now, if they are saying, well, there was a president called Akufuado who is the good, the greatest of all time, mm. where will people find... Um, a book that, or a material that documents what uh, he did whilst in office in the various sectors, people who worked under him, served in his government, what did they say? So I felt that there was a need to um, start putting those things together. And I started with the Mahama administration. <coughs> Writing books in Ghana is quite challenging. Uh, Why? It's very expensive to print. Okay. And because you don't have a big market, you print few copies, and uh, normally the fewer, the more expensive, and all of that. But <coughs> I still feel it is very important that we document some of these things. So I did the one on the Mahama administration, and I feel that. Uh, the Akufuado administration also deserves a book, if mm. not books. Mm. So, so, these books that you write, <coughs> are they a collection of your articles and stories that you published? Or they, are, they go beyond your personal publications? They go beyond my personal publications. Mm. I think... Uh, <coughs> The personal publications are often the corruption scandals that I report mm. on. Because in the Mahama administration, the MPP, for instance, campaigned on the stories I did. Okay. <clears throat> then I've also done uh, <clears throat> stories in the Akufado administration. So when I'm talking, there's a section on scandals. Mm. <clears throat> there are certain things that don't make it to the story itself. But when you are writing a book, the behind the scenes, you can add those ones. But a great uh, majority of the issues in this book, I think this is over 40 chapters, mm -hmm. we have some of the major things that happened. And then I go to interview people. Oh. So for instance, mm -hmm. there was a, a, a Ken must go thing. And at the time, someone told me that Brenna Champo was behind it. And uh, when I wanted to write a, uh, the book, I realized I needed to capture that because it was a major thing in the Kufado administration. So I went to Brian Champo and said, well, I'm told we were behind the Ken Must Go uh, rebellion. He said, no. If anybody says I was behind it, that is not accurate. I was actually in front of it. Mm. So why? Then I spoke to some of the MPs who were also leading. So uh, this may be something that is known. Mm -hmm. But there were happenings behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. We know how the NDC managed to get Bagman elected on the night. Mm -hmm. 
But prior to that, how they planned, how Muntaka got 15 MPs, got them into committees, and they planned like a military strategy. Mm. Camped, bars the parliament in the same uh, bars, they left their cars. And all of these things are not known to many people out there. Mm. But when you begin to write and then you ask the questions, you get a backstory, mm. and it also helps readers or Ghanaians appreciate how this nation is governed. Mm. Because we often see the end product, mm. but we don't know what happens at the back end or behind the scenes. Mm. So this is what this book is about. And mm. of course, some things are exclusive. You don't uh, hear about them, but you start asking questions, and then somebody mentions something in person. You go to another person for confirmation, then it leads you to... Okay, so let's step back a bit <coughs> to the fourth John. Now, these books that you write, so now there are two of them. Yes. Okay. But these books that you write are basically about the reigns of particular presidents. Yes. Although there are issues that are not directly linked to them but happen during their reign. Yes. And you speak with people involved. Yes. In the case of the fourth John, yes. did you speak with uh, President Mahama? Yes, I did. I <clears throat> reached out and I remember some of the people around him were angry. Mm -hmm. uh, they know the stories I did, the things I wrote about him, so they, they questioned my audacity to still want to speak with him. But the former president, I've said on uh, many platforms, is um, a believer in free speech. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't say it, he shows it. And so he met me and then we had an interview, a very long interview. Of course, we discussed other things. We disagreed about on some of the things, including the fourth story. But at the end of the day, he granted me the interview and he concluded by saying that, look, I sometimes don't agree with the things, some of the things you write about me or my government, but I admire your work and I will defend your right to say them. Now, remember he even told me that he, they had set up a small committee to look at the um, fallout from my publication because he was also still nursing presidential ambitions. But what he told them, and he could assure me, was that he told them that, look, <clears throat> some of the things may not be palatable, but nobody should attack me. He's a writer himself, mm -hmm. and one day he would also write his story. But this is my taken. Nobody should. So I remember when the story, the book was published, people like Abronye took the part about his father and Baumia's father, how they were taken out of office. They were calling his father a thief, a whole lot of things. But never did I get any attacks from the NDC. Mm. So that is the angle about the former president and mm. his book. Okay. So talking about that book, interestingly, the front pages today capture one of the things you did, uh, something arising out of the work that you did during his reign, which has become a sort of a, 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 a political um, slogan. Okay. And today, on the front page of the Daily Guide, mm. it, is, it is there. I would want to find out from you what you actually covered and when you interviewed him. What happened? Front page of Daily Guy says, a confirmed ghost chases Mahama. And in the story, this is the Daily Guy, page 3, Ernesto Fiedu, says, former President John Ramani Mahama has opened himself up for a renewed scrutiny over the infamous a confirmed saga, a controversial incident that appears to have come back to haunt him. In a bizarre twist, Mr. Mahama, who is the 2024 flag bearer of the NDC, has denied claims that Guinea files under the Eswal Sada flew to Burkina Faso, reigniting debate about the circumstances surrounding that confirmed affair. Quote, no Guinea file flew to Burkina Faso, Mahama stated emphatically during a media engagement in Mogatanga to wrap up his tour of the upper east. He said, Guinea files are not migratory beds, and the project was not for you to come and see thousands of Guinea files in one place. It was supposed to incubate the eggs and give the Guinea file day old chicks to farmers. And he says, assertions that Guinea files flew to Burkina Faso are baseless rumors carried by the media without the necessary checks to understand the project properly. You covered this. Yes. 
this whole a confirmed thing is linked to you. Yes. What happened? And when you interviewed him, did this issue come up? Well, I don't remember the specific issue of the <coughs> a confirm in our interview. Mm. But this is what happened. Yes. There was JIDA, mm -hmm. Youth Employment Agency, my first major investigative uh, journalism story, that certain companies were involved. And one of them was the RLG, mm. under the Agams Group. Mm. This company had <coughs> a number of, uh, or this group had a number of companies running JIDA pro projects. Mm. And then one of them, the Asuntaba Cottage Industry mm. and Exchange Limited, was paid money to train the youth in guinea fowl rearing. Mm -hmm. This company had a small uh, guinea fowl farm in Somburungo, mm. in the Bolga municipality. And that is what they used to pitch and got this contract. They were paid, I think, 1.7 million cities to train the youth. They didn't train a single person. Mm. I did the investigation. Mm. Then later on, they used that same project to pitch to SADA. Mm. And their ag agreement was that they would form a joint venture company named the SADA Asuntaba Guinea Fowl Production and Marketing Company Limited. Mm. So that company was formed. And um, Asuntaba was supposed to own like 55 per 56% shares and then SADA owned the rest of the uh, 44 44 so they were supposed to contribute capital into this company. And the agreement was that they would have their farms, but also engage outgrower farms, as the president mentioned. Mm. And they would set up processing factories mm. in Bolga, Wa, uh, Tamale, and I think two of the two other places in the Bono. I have for region mm. as it was known mm. at the time. Mm. Now, before they even formed this company, Sada paid 50 million Ghana cities of its contribution mm. as initial capital. Mm. So the question I asked the Sada CEO was, did you pay it to the, comp the joint venture company? They said no. They paid to Asongtaba, <coughs> that's the RLG subsidiary. Was that the arrangement? No, the arrangement was that we're forming a new company and that is what uh, was going to absorb the capital. Did Asongtaba or RLG's uh, group also pay their capital? He couldn't tell. And this was about two, three years after the, pro the project mm. <coughs> was supposed to have begun. So what happened virtually was the Processing centers, they even started building some of them. Mm -hmm. They didn't finish, it stopped. The money was not retrieved. But they started the project. They, they started. Okay. Just the, uh, some went up to the Lenten level. It okay. wasn't roofed when I went around okay. the country. And I visited the Asuntaba. There were only a few guinea fowls there. Mm -hmm. So the truth of the matter is the money was spent, mm -hmm. the guinea fowls and the projects did not materialize. Mm -hmm. So when the story aired, mm. some people started making political jokes out of it that well. Mm. The guinea fowls flew to Burkina Faso. Mm. Just like some people saying the excavators mm. flew. Vanished. <coughs> Vanished, yes. Mm. So I remember some even drew, uh, even that same Sada. It is unfortunate that the <coughs> uh, Sada, which is now NDA, mm. is still where it is and perhaps... It is the NDC that is only allowing the MPP to have an upper hand over them because mm. when MPP came, they changed the name to NDA, mm. Northern Development Authority from SADA. Mm. And we saw that over 400 tricycles got lost. They are prosecuting officials there who inflated a contract that their predecessor uh, signed. Mm. It was alleged to have been inflated. Mm. So, these are two administrations that took a policy that is supposed to be used to bridge the development gap between the north and the south, messed it up, but only one of them is uh, talking about the mess and the other one is complaining. So the reality is that the money was spent, the project did not materialize, 
the guinea fowl, the outgrow up uh, processing, it did not happen. The export of guinea fowls, it did not happen. But the money was spent. The only thing that is a political twist to it is the joke that arose from the story. Mm. That, well, we couldn't find a guinea fowl, so they flew to Burkina Faso. Okay.